Tennessee Wildcast is live on the air with the latest on hunting, fishing, boating, and all things outdoors. Make welcome your host, drummer and outdoor expert novice, Jason Harmon. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Tennessee Wildcast. We're glad you're tuning in, and we are live on Facebook. Hope y'all are tuning in and watching that. Just popped up on my phone here. We're live on Facebook. Look at that, guys. Um, glad y'all are tuning in. And if you're listening on the radio, uh, thank you all for tuning in there. Um, excited about today's show. We're going to be talking a lot about private lands, uh, conservation, habitat improvement, and all that good stuff with Mr. Clint Borm and Dan McEwen. And uh, Dan is with the McEwen Group, and he is uh, one of our TWRA TV Pro Shop partners for the show today. And thank you all for being in here. How y'all doing? Doing great. Doing Don't be good, shy Jason. now. Doing Jump good, in there. Buddy. Doing real good. <laughs> Uh, we got a lot to talk about today, and, and, and Dan and Clint have worked together for a long time. Uh, Dan uh, being on the real estate side, and Clint being on the on the habitat improvement side. Uh, he knows all things wildlife and, and habitat, so uh, they've been a good team, worked together real well. But uh, today we're going to talk to Dan about some of the stuff that McEwen Group's got going on to kick it off. Um, we featured Tumbling Creek on, on the show not too long ago, and uh, yes, sir. it's still out there for sale if y'all are interested in that one, right? It is. And uh, uh, videos are hitting hitting good on TWRA TV. It is. T Tumbling Creek is uh, one of my favorite areas in Middle Tennessee. I think you guys stock it with trout, and uh, so the fishing there is awesome and a uh, cool place. Yeah, a lot of your properties offer some, a lot of hunting and fishing opportunities there. So it's... Uh, those are cool properties you have for sale. The Piney River sold the other day, I believe. P Piney River's gone. Uh, Middle Tennessee's just blessed with so much good water, mm -hmm. and uh, that's kind of our our whole model is uh, uh, staying on the water and uh, good, good land up and down these creeks and rivers and fishing, and it's uh, it's awesome. Right. Um, we're going to show a video if y'all if y'all are watching on uh, online and uh, let y'all see this property, but it's um uh, the uh, Arrowhead Farm, and I'll. If I can get over to the button here, but this is uh, you can watch this on TWRA TV and uh, y'all can hear the audio Wherever there. Wherever this farm sat on a map, it would have all the desired qualities and more of a farm its size for what you can do there. It just so happens it's a half hour west of Nashville. Makes me want to go. There is ground and row crop, ground and fenced pasture. Knobs and draws covered in deep timber. Big islands of open field on hilltops and at the foot of ridge lines, there's 5,000 feet on two creeks in their sandy confluence. Wow. That's some beautiful piece of property there. It's going to take you back to your grandparents' Tell us farm. about what this property offers like and kind of what folks are going to be looking at if they're interested in, in this one. Other Looks era. like one Clint Borum needs to buy. I, think. I, <laughs> I tell you what, you loan me the money and I'll go get it today, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Turnbull Creek is one of those uh, blue ribbon streams in Middle Tennessee. I mean, it's loaded with smallmouth bass and just always been one of my favorite places to fish. So when this family called and, and wanted to sell this farm, I got super excited right away mm -hmm. uh, because any time I hear Turnbull, uh, it, it's it's excitement. And uh, having Beaver Dam Creek and Turnbull Creek and the confluence of two major streams coming together on a farm, that's all I need to hear. It's and, as good as it gets, man. <laughs> it's all I need to hear yeah. to, know, uh, to know it's a pretty special spot. It's been in the same family for uh, over 100 years, and it's just one of those blue chip, awesome places that we've got in middle tennessee no shortage of game in that oh. area either you never go down there there's bean fields and the bottom fields all along the creek there are soybeans planted there this year the farmer complained all year about not having any beans left and uh we all know why yeah and so uh, for sure one of those places well let's uh let's highlight a few of the others um and some that maybe a little more affordable. I don't know if it's in my <laughs> price range, but okay. uh, for guys like me, maybe that can uh, afford some smaller properties. Uh, this one's 433 acres in Murray and Lewis County. Uh, it's just south of Columbia. Let's talk about it. It's uh, Holloway Street. Yeah, Holloway Street. So it's 244 acres. 244 and, acres. Okay. And, and it's a really interesting place. It was uh, it was timber company land at one point. So the ridges uh, have been planted in pine, and so. There's big, uh, flat hardwood ridges that have pine habitat and food plots 
wheat and oats and clover mixed in the pine. And uh, this area is interesting. It's in Summertown, Ladies. Tennessee. Okay. So uh, Summertown is loaded with good water. Uh-huh. And so in every hollow, there's a spring or branch. And uh, it's just a good mix of open and, and woods and water. And it's 335,000. So it's a, okay. it's a uh, you know, it's Middle Tennessee's growing. It's getting harder and harder to find 200 and almost 250 acres for uh, that kind of money. So. Yeah. And then there's one more that that's um, maybe offers a little more fishing opportunity. Uh, this one here is on the uh, I forget what the river. The Duck that, River. The Duck River. Yeah. And so that's uh, one of the most diverse rivers in the state. So yep. Duck River is near and dear to my heart. Clint has <laughs> helped me uh, tremendously on my farm. Uh, our, we have a family farm on the Duck River, and uh, so I've been fishing for smallmouth and catfish and uh, fishing on Duck River my whole life. Mm-hmm. Uh, Duck River is awesome when it gets past Columbia because there's. Uh, it's very private. I mean, you rarely see, uh, you rarely see a, you know, uh, anybody. I mean, it, it's like the river to yourself. So uh, that that farm is in Santa Fe, which is uh, if you're not from Tennessee, you call it Santa Fe. Yeah. But us, ten- <laughs> us Tennesseans call it Santa Fe. I think I probably still call it Santa Fe. <laughs> yeah. And, and so 135 acres on Duck River, uh, really cool place. Uh, and, and anything on the river has a bunch of turkeys, a bunch of deer. Mm-hmm. Uh, you rarely go on these farms and not see wildlife and uh, so that's that's what i get excited about yeah so if you're if you're interested in properties like this that have abundance of wildlife opportunities for fishing just chances to be outdoors outside these are great pieces of property to look into um all different price ranges all different types of properties available um yeah dan has some really beautiful properties that right <clears throat> that second piece of property was one that i actually wrote a management plan on Really? Uh, I knew the gentleman that owned it. He was a firefighter in Larchburg, and he developed cancer and ended up passing away, which is a real sad yeah. story. We worked mm-hmm. together and, and did some really great stuff on that piece of property. Awesome. And uh, it's got that beautiful waterfall on it. We put those food plots in, and uh, so it is a, a real nice piece of property. Thank you. Cool. That's a good segue into how you and Dan met or worked have worked together in the past. Tell us a little bit about the partnerships y'all have had working together as a – as a group there. Yeah, Dan, uh, being a wildlife habitat biologist and working with private landowners in Middle Tennessee, uh, you know, I'm going to bump into, per se, mm-hmm. uh, some real estate guys and, and bumped into Dan and realized what kind of operation they had going on and uh, and what he was doing, dealing with just really fine pieces of property in central Tennessee. And uh Ended up basically developing a partnership. Worked with Dan on some things, and and uh, if I recall, we we even did a really cool QDM workshop out at Dan's and involved his neighbors. And I think when he saw what all we brought to the table, uh, what TWRA could provide, you know, it was something that they jumped on too. And we developed this partnership where, uh, you know, basically when Dan sells a piece of property and and the guys are interested in managing for wildlife, he says. You need to call Clint. Yeah, exactly. And and that's what we do. You know, we come out and work with these landowners and uh, help them develop those properties from a wildlife management standpoint and just take what I think are cream of the crop properties already and send them over the top, you know. Mm -hmm. Most of the time when somebody comes to us and says, we want to get a place for our family to go and to hunt and to fish and just to be on the land and uh, they, a lot of times they have a history of land, like maybe they went to their grandparents' farm or something like that, but they don't have a lot of current experience uh, taking care of it. So mm-hmm. they'll, they'll, they'll purchase it, and then they'll call and say, uh, oh, uh, what do we do now? And, uh, and that's where Clint has been so awesome uh, to figure out a forestry management plan or to recommend the people to do that and a food plot uh, management plan and just – Things that uh, regular folks don't think about all the time, and 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 oh, I, I think it's free, uh, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, they really like that. They go, well, "How much is it going to cost me?" And I go, "It's free." And they go, <laughs> "Yeah, wow." Well, we're going to dive into this with with Clint today. He's got a lot of information on how his programs work and how you can uh, meet up with him, get involved with this these programs, and improve your land for wildlife. And uh, before we go, before we uh, move on to the next segment 
Dan, tell us your website again uh, so people can go yep. check that out. So uh, it's McEwenGroup.com, M-C-E-W-E-N Group.com. Uh, we're actually in Columbia, Tennessee. Uh, we grew up in Hickman County. Uh, my son, Lewis, will be the sixth generation on the same farm down mm-hmm. on the Duck River in awesome. Hickman County. So That's cool. we're very rooted uh, in, in land and care deeply about the wildlife on it. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. Well, Dan, I appreciate you coming in and uh, – and being a pro shop partner with us, and thank y'all, thank you very much. And uh, it's uh, it's been fun. So yeah. uh, check out these properties, McEwenGroup.com, or you can call them nine three one three eight one eighteen zero eight. Thank you very good much. way to get a hold of you. Yep, so that is uh, okay. We appreciate you tuning in or coming in. I'll be expecting a call, Dan. All right. Get your questions answered. T W R A Q A Q A. All right. Well, that's our new music for our Q&A segment there. Clint, what do you think? I like it, dude. You like that? It, can, uh, it needs a little more country. Stuff. A little more country? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, anyway, we're going to highlight a, a question that uh, was coming in this week. or well, It's early in the week, but it's been coming in here a few weeks ago or uh, past couple weeks about uh, what's next year's opening dates for deer hunting? Because I'm trying to set my schedule, and I want to take my days off from work and go ahead and put in my days and – and try to work work out deer camp next year. So uh, those dates are always, or most of the time, permanent opening dates. And uh, they can be found on page 12 of the hunting guide. And, for instance, deer archery always opens on the fourth Saturday in September. Deer muzzleloader always uh, opens on the third Saturday before Thanksgiving. Deer gun is always the Saturday before Thanksgiving. And uh, the first young sportsman hunt is always the last Saturday in October. So, and then there's normally a young sportsman toward the end of the season there after the last week of, of the normal deer season. So, um, those are some of the dates that are they're always going to be permanent opening dates. And if you're trying to work your schedule for work and, and take time off, that's, that's when you do it. Yeah, absolutely. My, my biggest advice would be take time off to take those kids hunting and fishing on that juvenile hunt. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had an awesome time, and the deer were really moving, and the kids, I mean, that's what it's all about. Yep. Yep, and uh, it's fun to be out there with the kids. And another good chance for the kids is the free hunting day. Uh, there's, we have a lot of hunts that we offer as an agency. We'll organize uh, squirrel hunts, and free hunting day is normally the opening of the day of squirrel. So that's the fourth Saturday in August. So good opportunity to get the kids out. Absolutely. So how old's your son now? He's 15, Jason. 15. Man, I remember we shot some video of him at a hunt one time, and he was We um, actually went back really and young. looked at that a while back and had a good laugh a few weeks ago over that video of him at Buffalo Ridge. Yeah. Actually, he killed his first buck out there. Mm-hmm. And so that was some good times. And one of those youth hunts, that's, that's pretty cool. So, yeah, I can remember he's like, you just got to aim, shoot. <laughs> I can still remember that. That's, that's great. Uh, all right. Well, Clint, let's, let's, jump into, um, let's jump into what we're here to talk about today, wildlife habitat biologist for 26 counties. Uh, and you've been with the agency, or at least working in this position for 13 years. Yep. Give us a little history on how you got where you are today. Your dad was an officer, and he was worked for the agency for 40 years, and that's probably how you found your way our, you know, toward the agency. But tell us a little bit about history, how you got here. Yeah, you know, you hear these stories about, uh, you know, my dad owned a dairy barn, and I was milking cows when I was four, and I'm going to be milking cows when I'm 80. Uh-huh. Uh, it was one of those kind of deals. You know, my dad was a wildlife officer, uh, and we just grew up in the woods, my brother and I. Uh, all the time, that's what we thought about, hunting, fishing, where's the next place we were going to go, the next thing we were going to hook or shoot, and uh, went out with my dad and, and managed properties. Uh, I can remember him dropping us off when we were kids with fishing rods and some sandwiches and coming back at dark. You mm-hmm. know, we would fish all day. Just it, it's just what we did, and so I knew that that was the uh, the career path that I wanted to take. Eventually, uh, having seen law enforcement and all the things that went along with that, I, I really do enjoy uh, being at home in the evenings and, and being able to go hunting on opening weekend. So yeah. I decided to take the biologist path, and it has worked out well for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so let's just kind of keep hitting on that. You went to to school. Yeah, there's an education process and. Tell us about that. Yeah, I went to school at UT Martin, which, uh, 
you know, I will go ahead and put this out there. Probably the greatest wildlife school in the state of Tennessee. Of course, uh, you went there, right? Of course, you know, and uh, <laughs> it is it has spit out some of the best of the best, in my opinion. But uh, really enjoyed my time at UT Martin. Uh, it was a, a double-edged sword because uh, I didn't do a lot of duck hunting before I went there. And if you live within 45 minutes of Real Foot Lake, you're going to learn to go duck hunting. So uh, I've developed a new vice and uh, spend half my paycheck doing that now. Mm. And uh, but but I really did enjoy going to UT Martin and uh, you know started working for the agency as a fisheries guy, uh, okay, doing uh, lakes and hatchery work and and didn't think I would enjoy squeezing fish that much, but it was an outstanding job and uh, did stream survey for a couple of years and really enjoyed that sampled just about every stream west of the Tennessee River, uh, and then a position came open in lands management in uh, Middle Tennessee. And uh, I decided to come back closer to home and mm-hmm. uh, and took that position and have basically been doing lands management ever since. I learned something every day. I didn't know you were a fish squeezer. I was a fish squeezer, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fish head turned wildlife biologist uh, or habitat biologist. So let's let's define and explain to people. We've kind of already hit on it with Dan and talking about what how y'all work together. But what does a uh, wildlife habitat biologist do? You know, basically, Jason, I, I, I'll put an example out there. Okay. Let's say uh, you, with all the folding money that you have in your pocket. In my uh, 10 acres. In your own <laughs> 150 acres oh, wow. in Murray County. Man, uh, moving on you up. you just uh, really didn't know what to do, but you wanted to manage that property for wildlife, for deer, for turkey, for quail, whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. I'm the guy you would call. Uh, you would give me a call. We would talk about uh, the property, where it's at. And we would set a field visit up, uh, set an appointment where I could come out and we could just basically take a look at the property, talk to you about your goals and objectives for this tract, and then uh, it would be my job to come back and develop a written management plan with GIS-based maps and practices drawn in, uh, recommendations on what to plant, where to plant, what to do, uh, to give you this guiding document on how to manage this piece of property. And then uh, after that, then we would sit down and talk about all of the cost share programs that are out there that will help fund most of that work if you were interested. Because you mentioned earlier that um, it's pretty much free to the landowner for, for these programs to be implemented on their properties, right? It is. Uh, there's you probably know, some cost, I mean, in places, but well, for the most you know, part. from us, it's a free service that we provide. Okay. What TWRA is looking for is a way to work with the other 90 percent of the state. Okay. Uh, let's face it, 10 percent of the state is publicly owned land, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and so that leaves 90 percent out there that we really don't have a hand in as far as management goes for wildlife. That's a pretty big percentage. So having these private lands biologists or habitat biologists uh, gives us an avenue to work with private landowners that are interested in managing their properties for wildlife. It allows us to broaden our horizons. We can... We can manage the heck out of that that five to ten percent, but you know if we don't have an impact on that ninety percent that's out there, mm-hmm. what are we doing? And and we just want to give those people guidance uh, based upon their goals and objectives, and create the best habitat we can statewide to improve those game populations. I see more and more properties being bulldozed over coming into work the other day. I tried, to, I decided to take a different route, more through the country, coming to work, and I see more trees cut and more land cleared and more buildings going up and it's amazing how much property we're losing every day it, it really is jason uh urban expansion uh as you well know you know nashville spring hill murfreesboro are three of the fastest growing places in the united states of america right now so we're seeing that in those counties uh what we want to do is try to protect those areas where those landowners have a a, a, a demand or an interest to manage for wildlife and and we're making progress there we really are mm-hmm um, you mentioned uh, wildlife biologists across the state and us, and you keep saying that. There are four wildlife habitat biologists across the state, correct? And then there's some other uh, partner biologists that you work with. Sure, yeah, there are four of us, uh, and we cover the four TWRA regions. Uh, mm-hmm. Chris Hunter in West Tennessee, myself in Middle Tennessee, 
Uh, Michael McCord covers the Plateau, and Stephen Thomas covers Far East Tennessee. Uh, those are the four wildlife habitat biologists with Tennessee. Uh, we also have three Quail Forever partner biologists. Okay. Two of those are in West Tennessee, Gordon Counts and Brittany Vares. Uh, and then we also have uh, Josh Turner, who works uh, – kind of region two, region three uh, area uh, and, and worked with Michael and myself. And and so they've been really outstanding to have those extra three people to visit with landowners and develop these plans has been great. Mm -hmm. And all these positions uh, are in partnership with uh, NRCS, or Natural Resource Conservation Service. Okay. And now that was going to be the next question. You've got NRCS and, and throw around a lot of acronyms, but, you know, just uh – what is the NRCS and kind of the behind the scenes of that? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so you want to go where the money is, all right? Uh, TWRA has a decent budget to do work, but the federal government has a much larger budget. Right. So uh, NRCS uh, stands for Natural Resource Conservation Service, and they used to be called the old ASCS office or the old Soil Conservation Office, as a lot of the old timers would okay. call it. Is soil conservation still around? Uh, it is, yeah. but they have renamed themselves as the Natural Resource Conservation okay. Service. Okay. They are a branch under USDA, uh, and their job, they have an office in every county in every state uh, and have personnel to administer the farm bill. Mm -hmm. The farm bill is a bill that is appropriated through the federal government, Congress, and Senate every five years. It actually has billions, and when I say billions, that is with a B, billions of dollars in conservation efforts within that farm bill. USDA and NRCS, their job is to take that portion of money and get it down to the ground level to work with farmers and landowners. Their job is to protect air, soil, water, and wildlife. That is their mission. Okay. And so they're working with row crop farmers, with cattle farmers, and with recreational landowners to help them implement conservation-friendly practices that protect all or, or air, soil, water, and wildlife. So that money... Um is able to be applied for, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. They have programs that these landowners apply for. We develop management recommendations for them or develop a plan, mm -hmm. either the district conservationist within RCS or the private lands biologists deal with the wildlife uh, vendors. And, and right. we develop a management plan, and then we look at a program they can sign up for to potentially receive cost share to implement those practices that we've recommended in that plan. It's a win-win. Uh, you know, that money is out there to protect these species, to protect the soil and air and the water, uh, improve water quality, and it's available for private landowners, whether they're a, a 20,000 acre row crop farmer or whether they're a 50 acre recreational landowner. Uh, there are biologists and district conservationists out there that will come and meet with them and help them develop a plan for their property and then guide them through the cost share programs that are out there. So you mentioned the 50 acres. What's the smallest piece of track of land that that you could put one of these programs on? Or? There's really no limit, Jason. Okay. You know, I've worked with some really small landowners. You yeah. know, uh, in fact, I, I worked with a gentleman in Marshall County that had 20 acres, and he wanted to manage his property for quail. Uh, five to eight years later, he, he calls me and tells me he has what he thinks is three to five coveys of quail on that 20 acres. So wow. there's really no limitations. You know, I've worked with 7,000 acres on one piece of property. Mm. So uh, from big to small, it's our job to service them all. So <laughs> That's the new slogan. Let's put that on the website, which is yeah. tmwildlife.org, and you can go there and find more information about these programs. But uh, from big to small, we'll service them all. Is that it? <laughs> yeah, properties, so, that is. So, yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, people buy property, and, and I think about this. They, they want to buy a tractor, and then they buy a bush hog, and they say, all right, let's go cutting. But that's not always best for the property. Y'all have practices like uh, old field, food plot management, forest management, wetland management, all these different ideas for these different properties. But bush hogging is, and buying a tractor and bush hogging is not the way to manage those. Yeah, we have a, uh, a bad habit in Tennessee of doing what we call recreational bush hogging. <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> I think it's bred into our system. Uh, well, I own this tractor, and it's sunny outside. Yeah. I need to be driving it. I don't have know, nothing else to do. Because Let's I'm go. paying for it. I need to be <laughs> driving it. Let's hook the bush hog up and cut some stuff My down. My wife's going to make me sell it. <laughs> but what most people don't realize, when, when they are when they become educated on the biology of the species that they're trying to manage for, that may be the very last thing they want to be doing on that piece of property. You know, We have primary nesting seasons where you don't want to be doing that at all mm-hmm. if wildlife management is your objective. Uh, and, and if you're managing for birds, you're, you're just creating a worse environment than what was originally there. So we do have specific practices that we look at based upon the landowner's objectives. Uh, it may be prescribed burning. It may be disking. It may be herbicide use. Uh, but we evaluate those sites and work with those landowners to make the best recommendations. And then um, let's reiterate, uh, and I don't think we said this, but uh, how to contact how to contact one of those four people, uh, one of the four wildlife habitat biologists or your Quail Forever partners? Sure. The easiest way is to go to our website and uh, click on wildlife and then uh, wildlife habitat, mm-hmm. and, and it'll pull our page up. Uh, and then there'll be a map with who to contact uh, in your area, in your county, a state map. Uh, those names and numbers will be listed, and, uh, and and you can give us a call or email us, and, and we'll get something going. You can also walk into your NRCS office, talk to your district conservationist, uh, and if you're interested in managing for wildlife, they'll typically give us a call yeah. and let us know that we need to set an appointment with this landowner. But uh, either way, it, it's really easy to do. Okay, cool. Makes it real easy. And then y'all set up booth, and we're going to run out of time, but y'all set up um, a booth at the National Wild Turkey Federation Convention every year. Y'all going to be there this year? Yeah, we're going to be there again this year. It's a partnership with NRCS. We've got a 1,000 square feet, and uh, and we're going to work uh, with anybody that wants to come in and talk to us. We're going to have a lot of things available for landowners at that show. Cool. So y'all... Y'all um, were able to talk with a lot of people there, and a lot of people wow. that come through there are definitely have a lot of them have property, and, and it's a good time to tens of thousands with. of people on a daily basis. Yeah. Trust me. <laughs> and we're gonna have a booth out there. I think we're gonna have a trailer out there and some other stuff for y'all to check out from the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. So uh, make your way to the National Wild Turkey Federation Convention this year in, in uh, Nashville. So, well, I think we covered everything on my list for the most part. I'm sure we missed something, but. Uh, the website, tmwildlife.org, great place to find wildlife, more information. Wildlife Habitat. Yep. Click on it. That's it. Uh, Clint, we appreciate you. Thank yeah. you for being here. You do great work for the agency and, and for those landowners out there. And uh, we appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, we're here every uh, every week and uh, all the information you need to stay connected with TWRA. So uh, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you all next time. Thanks for tuning in. Stay connected with TWRA by visiting our website at tnwildlife.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hey, it's all about Tennessee wildlife. It's what we do. Tennessee Wildcast will be on the air again next week. We'll see you then.